Hey there, welcome to our 30 day content creation challenge, day number three. Today's topic is what is growth driven website design? Let's find out. For most organizations, their website is their number one marketing asset and also their number one 24 seven salesperson. That's why it's so critical to put the time, money, and resources into doing it right. There are two main approaches to website development. In the traditional approach, it happens about every three to five years when an organization all of a sudden says, hey, we need to update our website. It's a big upfront cost, and it's usually built on opinions versus data. And nothing much happens with the website during the off years except for some minor updates and maintenance. These days, waiting for three to five years will put you way behind the eight ball. Technology and user behavior is changing so fast that it's critical to focus on continually evaluating your site, analyzing what's working, what's not working, and making improvements. Growth-driven design spreads the investment out over time and ensures the site is always running at peak performance and creating the best user experience possible. The process for growth-driven website design begins with building a well-planned strategy, and from there you develop out a Launchpad website. The Launchpad site is just your starting point. It's not perfect, but it's something that you can build from and improve upon, and it can be either your current website or a newly launched site. The growth-driven design process is cyclical and ongoing. It begins with the planning phase where you hypothesize about which actions you can take that will most likely have the highest impact on your business goals and objectives. From there, you move into the development phase where the rubber hits the road and everyone on your team gets together to start completing each action item that you selected in the planning phase. In the learning phase, you analyze the results and either validate or disprove your hypothesis. Then you move into the transfer stage. One of the keys to good growth-driven design is transparency and communication. What you learn from your experiments and research may have implications in other areas of the business. So here is where you share what you learn with business leaders from across the organization so they can stay informed and leverage your work to make the best decisions that they can for their departments. Here are the steps for developing your website strategy, which is going to drive the entire project. It begins by identifying your goals, which are the business objectives that we're trying to achieve. And they need to be smart, which is specific, measurable, achievable, results focused, and time bound. Next, we develop your buyer personas. These are fictional representations of your ideal profitable customer. There are many tools available to help you develop your buyer personas, but the key is to make sure we clearly define your target audience. Who are we trying to engage on the website? Now that we know who our buyer personas are, we need to start making some fundamental assumptions about them and how they will use the website. Let me explain. The assumptions that we make may or may not be true at this point, but there are best guess about the problems we think our personas are facing and solutions that can solve their pain. From our assumptions, we can start creating value proposition and start mapping out the buyer's journey, which is the next step in planning your website strategy. During journey mapping, we look at the three stages that buyers typically go through. Awareness, where they realize they have a problem. Consideration, where they start researching their problem and ways to solve it. And then the decision stage is choosing a solution. And at each of these stages, the buyer has different questions, concerns, objections, and needs that they have to answer. And this is where we map this all out to start figuring out what kind of content and information do they need at each of these stages. Now that we know who our personas are and have started making some assumptions about what type of information they're looking for and how they'll use the website, we can start doing some research to see if we're headed in the right direction. We'll begin by quantitative research, which is an audit of your website to see what's working, what's not working. We'll look at user data, campaign data, and analytics to try to find patterns and common themes. 
We can also start looking at qualitative research, things like direct feedback, interviews, surveys, slide ups, online chat, and secret shoppers. All right, now comes the fun part. We're ready to brainstorm a wish list. At this point, we're not worried about budget. We just want to make a list of everything we can think of to do with the site if we lived in a perfect world of unlimited resources. Then we can narrow the list down to the 20% of items that will have the biggest impact on your business goals and objectives. That list becomes our scope of work. There are a million things that you could do with the website and it can be very overwhelming. The website hierarchy provides a roadmap that gives focus to the team and sets clear expectations. I'm not going to go through this in detail, but feel free to pause the video to take a closer look at how to use audience, value, usability, conversion rate optimization, stickiness, personalization, asset creation, and promoters to ensure practitioners know exactly what they should be doing to move specific metrics and how to track and measure their progress. If you'd like to work with a certified growth-driven website design agency to help you with your website, give us a call. We're here to help. Good luck.